Hello, everyone. I have Anshin here. She is a traditional midwife. She is the woman I went to go visit in December to get some prenatal care. She's in Boston. And today we're just gonna talk about cryptic pregnancy. She's gonna talk about her journey, journey and what this has become for her. And we'll just kinda go from there today. Yeah, sounds good. How would you like me to start? Does so, my mm -hmm. when did you first learn about cryptic pregnancy? Well, my, actually, my first cryptic pregnancy, I didn't even know there was anything called cryptic pregnancy or extended gestation or anything like that. Um, my first cryptic baby kind of was able to show up just enough and everything to satisfy everybody but there was there were odd things about it because her um the they diagnosed her gestation age wrong like she wasn't they they said that she was not not premature but she they said that she was born early and she there was no signs that she had been born early or anything like that um and that i had, a, had a, i had that confirmed by another traditional midwife so it was it really wasn't until my um my second cryptic pregnancy um when she she wasn't uh or cryptic pregnancy extended gestation she she did wasn't um showing up you know appropriately like at all she was she wasn't giving them anything you know and I, I think it's really important for me to mention that i got pregnant with her extremely soon like right after i gave birth pretty much i mean just a handful of months after i gave birth to my first one so uh first cryptic pregnancy who is my second child my my second cryptic pregnancy is my third child and um but and so and it really wasn't until i mean i scoured the internet okay the reason why I know people are getting things from my material is because they basically quote me, but they don't give me the credit, <laughs> but they quote me and um, on like main, like Healthline, I think I saw a quote from me, but they didn't, but they didn't uh, quote me. They didn't give me the credit, um, but because I scoured the internet, I mean, most of us who go through this understand that like we are we are google searching everything we can possibly think of we're 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 um scouring the internet as i said and um i did for that for the entire entirety of my second cryptic pregnancy which is my third baby and i didn't no i think there's a reason for everything and i didn't even find the term cryptic pregnancy or extended gestation until I was a month out from giving birth to my second cryptic baby. So that was in 2000, I guess that would be 2015. Mm -hmm. Is when and I met the online community. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. And at that point, were you considering being a traditional midwife or what brought you to that? Yeah, so that point in time, let's see, I was I was more or less, you know, practicing as a doula. I was like a birth worker, you know, a mother who was inspired by natural birth and um, my own natural births at that point I had had, when I discovered the online pregnancy community, I um I had had two natural births at that point and one one of them was unassisted um and then my my third baby the second cryptic pregnancy would also be unassisted and um and I was inspired by birth power birth empowerment and so I had since my my first child had been born in 2012 been doing you know, doing birth work, reaching out, talking to women, testifying about my experience. And then um, 
And then by the time, you know, by the end of my second cryptic pregnancy, I had been conversing with probably dozens of women and helping them through their, um, you know, through their birth experiences and um, even postpartum and uh, health, health needs. And, um, and so I was more or less like a doula, you know, I was, you know, people were coming to me for my expertise. I was, um, I had started years before that, um, helping people, um, with, with their health, alternative health needs. So, um, this was kind of just an expansion of that an extension of that as I became a mother and inspired by my experiences and yeah. So. Okay. Thank you for sharing that. Yeah. Yeah. So along this journey, I've come to study the state laws and different regulations they have set up for having a baby at home, for having a baby with a doula or a traditional midwife Mm -hmm. or a a medical midwife or, you know, the different areas uh, that there are, there are set laws for. Now, something is different about Massachusetts. Could you talk a little bit more about that? Yeah, so uh, Massachusetts, you know, uh, we're, we're given the term um, uh, taxachusetts because it's true. Um, and there's a lot of red tape, but it was so about a lot of things and um, they like to take your money uh, <laughs> for a lot of things. But, but, um, but the thing about, and there's a lot of, you know, I'm sure there are a lot of people on here that would understand when I say that the heavily liberal, you know, state might produce a lot of things that are aggravating or frustrating. But on the other hand, there is this sort of this paradox that this heavily liberal state that actually was one of the, um, for those who don't know, uh, one of the founding um, colonies, and and it um, was was part of the northern, you know more, I guess, liberal minded, you know, abolitionists, all that, you know, the abolitionist history and revolutionary history before that. And um, so all that has added up to actually, um, interestingly enough, um, a a community of, of midwives, both medical and traditional, although, you know, And traditional midwives have a lot of freedom in Massachusetts, um, but it's it's everybody, you know, obviously the medical field has more clout, but there's a community of of birth workers in in Massachusetts at large and who work very hard, have worked very hard for decades to keep um, freedom for mothers and babies and for practicing midwives. And so in Massachusetts, traditional midwifery is um, is unregulated. And there have been a lot of traditional midwives and even medical midwives who have worked to keep that keep that that way because overregulation restricts uh, the mother, the mother's choices and the, the heavily heavy restrictions on the mother's choices in her birth have led to um, well, over medicalization of birth, which has met, led to a lot of medical injury, which um, which does contribute heavily to you know we feel as a midwife midwife community society that has really contributed to the um, rising maternal mata- mortality rate in America at large, which is the only developed country that has a, a rising mortal, uh, maternal mortality rate. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's good, thank you. Mm-hmm. Now, I visited you in December because I wanted a prenatal appointment. Mm-hmm. I've had a lot of trouble trying to get anything done at a medical facility. And, you know, at first I didn't know I was having this sort of pregnancy, um, but you were able to support me and what are some of the things that you did whenever I was there in December 
that you were um, that allowed you to confirm my pregnancy? Yeah, so I mean, um, you were pretty far along at that point. You are pretty far along at that point. You were pretty far along. So, um, and the the word confirmation is a very interesting word. Yeah. <laughs> you know, um, I mean, if you just waddled into a medical facility, I don't see like I mean, okay, <laughs> confirmation right there. Yeah. The secretary at the front desk can confirm your pregnancy, right? Yeah. Um, so, and. Um, you know, you were at the, literally at that point, you know, where a secretary could, who was at the front desk could confirm your pregnancy. Um, but, you know, uh, we did, I remember we did have to, you know, have a conversation with your relative and, you know, all that who wasn't feeling good about, you know, about the situation, you know, traditional midwifery is highly contested even still. There's a, there's a long history of that in the United States. Um, so anyway, um, to me, it wasn't so much about confirming your pregnancy for you or me, mm -hmm. you know, it was a confirming it for you or me. It was, or it was like, it's like this need to uh, uh, try and put a layer of, of, of rationalization of calm. Um, cause a lot of, I mean, a lot of it just comes out of uh, emotion and kind of an hysterical attitude about things just because it's not it's not mainstream it's not medical that's all and so um I tried to mainly I tried to instill calm in the situation and through that you know through that intuitive place you know <clears throat> be rational about things you're very you're obviously pregnant right and so the only thing for me was to just check in intuitively uh with you the babies do some um, belly mapping maybe positioning say the positioning and just feel the energy and movement of the babies do some listening maybe with the doppler and just sort of the only confirmation really for me and for you as far as i'm concerned is that everything is going well and that you're healthy but confirming your pregnancy at that point for you or me wasn't the issue. I do think, you know, when it came to the third party, yeah. you know, there, was, there needed to be some calm calming. Yeah. For those of you who don't know, my mom was on the phone during the appointment with Anshan. And my mom has kind of freaked out. She's uh, been kind of unsettled about this pregnancy because she is a nurse and she works in the medical field and she's never seen this. At times she's very supportive and very open with this, but then it's like she talks to someone else at work and then she starts getting anxious and worried about it. <clears throat> yeah, so it's about staying centered and grounded and, you know, yeah. just, do, just doing my work which is to support the mother. Because if you support the mother, the mother will support the baby. That's, that's how it works. Yeah. I remember when I met with you, you, were, you said that there's literally no more room for the babies to move. <laughs> and yeah, yeah, that's what that's, I mean, with this whole journey with uh, CPEG, which you know, stands for a cryptic pregnancy extended gestation, um, it, it's been a journey of seven years all together, maybe more, maybe a little more, uh, seven plus years for me, and and I'm learning something new all the time. Uh, and one of those things is that there can be, you know, the babies will be very seemingly very settled, you know, head down, not a lot of room, and um, we're still okay. <laughs> <laughs> like I don't you know and then in, 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 in non CPEG that is the case as well it's just on a different timeline you know the thing is with you know with this we're not we're not fully we're not fully aware of what the timelines are exactly correct so yeah so yeah things were settled seemingly pretty settled and stuff and but the uh, but it seems everything with CPEG takes time. 
the con you know, conception, even like from conception, it seems like, you know, the body really can, the mother's body can really hold on to that conception for a while and, you know, not really do a lot of growing. Um, and uh, the sort of in the sort of uh, incubation or hi I was a hibernation. So it was almost like a hibernation. It, it, does ha it does happen in mammals. It's known to happen in mammals, you know, when there, especially when there's high levels of stress, you know, in the in the first in the, in the mother's life. So, yeah, that's good. Mm -hmm. Well, is there anything else that you want to talk about? Okay. Well, um. I guess um, I was thinking, um, I don't know, perhaps, perhaps people want to know more about traditional midwifery, um, you know, because at this point, um, at this point, you know, the medical field doesn't recognize it officially, right, CPEG officially. Um, I have written an ebook. I've written a couple ebooks. Uh, one of them is a like an herbal guide for a CPEG, and then um, one of them, another, the other one is like um, my collective, um, what do they call it? Anecdotal, you know, experience, anecdotal data, observational data on on the patterns with um, cryptic pregnancy and um, and what I've seen. You know, essentially what I've seen. Um, I think it's good to address, since this, this is all online, it's good to address the fact that when people first do a Google search, like now it, you might find things that kind of legitimize you know, CPEG, like, you know, uh, that's a big turning point. That's only the last like handful of years, maybe, um, and maybe a couple of years. And, but, uh, you know, People, I think, get very turned off because when I first, when I first met the online community, it was very chaotic. You know, there was a lot of sort of very ungrounded thought. You know, narratives and, and um, you know, oh, you could be pregnant forever. <laughs> you know, <laughs> sort of like too ungrounded. Not not, and then, and people were talking about it as if. Um, there were there was backing to what they said you know when perhaps their own experience there backs up no backs up what they said but but um they they would speak about it in a generalist term you know like oh i've been i've had no i've been pregnant for eight years or whatever you know come to find out that the women who would say that you know were usually overweight had diabetes, you know, there were different things that I found out through the work that doesn't negate what they say necessarily. It just, it just shows that there's more to it. So I, I just, I guess what I'm saying is I encourage people to, um, you know, to keep searching and to not get turned off too quickly. You know, there are, there are legitimate, um, women with experiences and things to say so yes like I would say I've experienced that too in my research for quite a while I didn't want Google to be my resource because of how poor the information was regarding the subject a lot of people even medical um, medical practitioners they'll talk about this, but they have never met a woman who's going through this and they do not actually acknowledge it themselves. So they don't say anything really positive about having these longer pregnancies. And I've also seen it where doctors who have tried to work with women in this community, they end up getting released or um, getting demoted because it's not really acknowledged in the medical field. Yeah, and I think it's important to acknowledge that um, this is a this is an issue that is um, it's worldwide, but it, it's much more severe in the West. It's much more severe in the West. Like um, I've met many many women, for example, from Africa, from different places in Africa, um, and their experience, while it might be challenging, 
uh, and uh, maybe not everybody's heard about CPEG, but but it's a lot more accepted. Let's just say there's a this just seems to be a uh, even a level of acceptance in the medical community um, that they can they can find, and they tend to work with more traditional midwives um, in those cases. But there, you know, it, um, one woman I who actually had moved from Africa to the States and then she got in touch with me and we met. Uh, she flew all the way out here from, I think it was tech, Texas. And um, we met and I did a exam and you know, I said, no, but at that point her husband, her husband who was a, uh, um, it was a ultrasound tech, um, wasn't even acknowledging that she was pregnant when it was very, it was very obvious that she was pregnant. And I even had my hand on her belly and I said, hey, you wanna come over here and feel the baby kicking my hand right now? I mean, it was like, it was completely obvious. It wasn't, you know, very hidden at all. And, um, but she, he, he didn't want to even touch her belly. She wrote me, I, I said, you know, I think your best chances is to go back to Africa. I said, you have, you have care in Africa for cryptic pregnancy? She said, yeah. I do. I said, then go back to Africa if you can, <laughs> because I'm it. She's like, you're it. I said, yeah, I'm it. Just me. <laughs> and I can't, you know, I, I can't, you know, do anything medical. I don't, I don't have, I don't, I legally, I'm not trained to, I'm not legally, you know, allowed to give drugs or medical care or anything like that. I am a traditional midwife. I don't know how it is in Africa or in your country, but mm -hmm. that's what it is. And so um, I think probably about six months later, maybe maybe more than that, she wrote back and she said, I want you to know that you gave me the courage through your confirming my of my pregnancy. You gave me the courage to go back to Africa and um, get care. No, go back to the care over there and I gave birth to my son. I forget when it was, but she gave birth to her son and she sent me a picture of her son. So that's awesome. Yeah, I was, I was, that was one of the experience. Had, there had been so many very sad sort of um, experiences of women becoming derailed, you know, have not able to stay grounded, uh, struggling with even like severe depression and and stuff like that and there's a lot there's a lot of miscarriages and uh, at least at least in the cryptic pregnancies in the west you know there's a lot of miscarriage miscarrying i think that's heavily due to um the not being supported you know, yeah and then also when um i've seen a lot of women go from doctor to doctor and they want answers and they they're not really seeing the spiritual side of it and once they do that then it's it's a scary uh, ride for them. Yeah, yeah, it is, and uh, you know, it was a lot of dark years. I probably the first probably the first good like four or five years it was pretty dark. You know, um, the women who reached out to me were on you know maybe unstable or just struggling a lot. And there's a lot of there was even um, uh, there was even two suicides. Um, my first couple of years um and i just it was really hard and this woman was sort of one one of the first women who um you know my practice in my practice i was able to see the results of the the help and the care and the support i was giving to these women you know it was hard it was hard to see that because maybe they were inspired or they felt stabilized by what I said and my care. But then as you would, as you talked about maybe with your mom was that she would go and talk to somebody else, right? Then get, get anxious again. So that, that's what would happen is that they would go and get pulled this way and that, you know, um, from other people and they couldn't stay, they couldn't stay centered. And if I'm the only one and I'm a traditional midwife, be like, I'm not, no. A legitimate me medical professional right so um that's another layer you know other people might accuse um or ostracize them or um 
ridicule them for their pregnancy experience, first of all. But then who are you going to go? Who are you seeing? <laughs> you know, <laughs> who are you seeing? Who is this person? Is that even legal? Like I had one woman, ta- like she hashtagged me probably a hundred times. I'm like, doesn't that mean I'm trending? Maybe I should see this as a positive thing. <laughs> she passed me like a hundred times with with these accusations that what I was doing was illegal. And I'm like, okay, I had to get on my YouTube and listen. I'm not doing anything illegal. Like, yeah, you know, it, I would never do that. You know, that so. Um, yeah, so and I think it? some women who aren't weren't actually pregnant have come against you. Yeah. yeah 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 like um do you mean like they they say they, they have ridiculed you because they didn't yeah. find to be pregnant i mean not that they got your services but uh they were not ever pregnant so they were ridiculing you for the things that you were saying you mean that they they that they had some kind of pregnancy symptoms or no yeah or they, they would have had pregnancy symptoms they thought maybe they were they thought or some of them quickly realized they weren't and just kind of went it went against you um yeah, that was intense it was like it was it was really intense <clears throat> like uh for for a little while there and uh really then i uh just in the last like few years i've met you i've met other women who are going this journey and embracing the, I would say the core spiritual aspect of this journey. And even like, you know, I've had um, a, a woman um, a researcher with a, with a lot of uh, experience in, in research, um, join intuitive health and um, Sheree Meredith, you know, I can say Meredith is She's completely publicized on my website and everything. And she is starting to look into actually putting together, you know, legitimate research um, in that on that side of things, you know, um, for CPED. These things take time, but but we're starting, I mean, that wasn't that wasn't even a possibility, you know, even just a few years ago. And so so I think we're seeing you're starting to see it. I'm starting to see some breakthrough, yeah, here. So, um, yeah. So I thought that was important to just talk about the online community, the online presence. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm gonna put Anshin's website down below for anyone who wants to reach out or see what she has on her site regarding uh, CPU uh, extended gestation. So I have two. So my intuitive health is sort of like the umbrella one and then um and then this i've changed it recently to soul child midwifery so i'll i'll send you the the link and everything but it's the same website it's just i changed the, the soul as soul child midwifery is specifically um specifically focused on cpeg so perfect all right well thank you everyone for listening we'll go ahead and go from here uh we yeah. might talk again about another subject or who knows yeah. maybe I'll deliver soon and we'll talk about that yeah absolutely <laughs> all right thank you so much Samantha I appreciate it awesome. bye bye